Hey everyone, and welcome back to Cosplay Sewing School. Today we are gonna talk about dye work and how to get polyester fabric to have a nice solid color. All right, so first of all, let's go ahead and talk a wee bit about polyester fabric. Typically, it is not a fabric that I like to use, or actually, more correctly, a textile that I like to use. Mostly because it's really not that great for the planet and it doesn't feel the best to wear. But here's the thing. I don't like to let things just end up in the garbage. So I have done a whole bunch of different projects and actually have been sort of reviving some fabric that was handed to me that actually came from a smoking house. And one of the ways that I am dealing with the smell and the problem of the smoking is with dye work. So the white bridal satin that we're about to mess with today was from that smoking stash. Now the smoke smell, even though I washed it and washed it on hot and, and, and put it in the dryer, it wasn't 100% out. But I knew that with the dye work and the high heat that's going to come from the synthetic dye that I could probably kill the smell. And I was right. So before we head over, what I'm going to tell you is this. I have prepped my fabric by washing it thoroughly and actually this time I put the fabric in the dryer, although I wouldn't normally do that for bridal satin, but I just needed to try and get that smell out. So I have washed it and put it through the dryer. And the important part here is that I don't want to have any leftover soap, chemicals, any sort of residue that might prevent the dye from soaking in. I have also soaked my fabric and then put it on a light spin cycle in the washing machine. And that is to basically get my fabric so there's even dispersion of the dye. And now the next thing we're going to be doing is heading outside. Now I'm going to pre-warn you the sound quality is maybe not the best because uh, my neighborhood's really noisy. <laughs> so uh, I was working in my front yard. So let's head outside and look at the dye pot and talk about how to dye synthetic fabric. All right. So we are going to fill this giant pot with water. Get this on and then I'm going to talk to you next. What I'm gonna talk to you guys about real quick is fabric. So um, we wanna have fabric that's actually wet. If your fabric is dry, you're gonna get really weird spotty stuff. So what I have done is, this is about three yards-ish-ish of fabric. I didn't really measure super good because I have lots of this stuff. So I know that I think that'll be enough for all of my number 57s that are gonna go into this costume. So what I have done is use the rinse and spin cycle on my washing machine. I put my spin on a little bit lower than I normally would. And so this is not sopping wet, right? But it's wet. So that just helps the dye disperse. All right, and so this water is gonna start to get hot. Let's see where it's at. So 82, uh, let's just let this keep going. When it gets, I don't know, say about 170, 180, I think I'll toss the dye in there. Um, it's a little bit easier to see this way. Okay, so we've hit about 160-ish. So what I'm gonna do here is start mixing the color in. I know we said a little more, but you know what? We'll go for it, it makes the water look pretty. So the first thing I'm adding is the color intensifier. Now, I want you guys to know, I'm doing this outside. The stuff is stinky, miserable, icky wicky stuff. Don't get it on your hands. I don't do this inside. Do I have some tools? So everything that I use here, everything, is only used for dye, okay? Nothing else. That's why these things are the color they are. But guess what? The dollar store, great for this kind of stuff. And yeah, this little ditty, this pot was a bit expensive, but you know what? I wanted a rig that I could really do a big amount. And the reason I have so much water here, actually, as I stir this in, is because the more water you have, especially when you are tub dyeing, basically, or we're trying to get a solid color, the more water you have, the more area there is for the fabric to disperse, and it's not all smooshed together. So even though this is probably way more than, need, than it might look like you need for three yards, this is perfect, actually. Okay, so we've got that in. Now, 
I have this. So the iDye Poly comes in a pack like that and it's self dissolved. So all we have to do is, and we're gonna start mixing. And that will, the powder will come out and this will start dissolving. We are gonna let that cook and I will meet you back here when we are up to temperature. All right, we are going to be putting in the fabric. We've reached about 180-ish degrees, but I don't wanna shock the fabric too much, so I wanna get the fabric in while the temperature is still going up. And just so you know, it is cicada season and I am filming in my front yard, so there might be extra sounds that are not in my normal videos. All right, so there's the first piece. And we go with the second piece. And you can kind of see it already start to get color. We've got like a pinky tone there. So we're just gonna go ahead and keep that water on. Keep mixing every five or 10 minutes. All right, so now I am stirring. So the goal here is to have about 45 minutes to an hour in the pot for this to get to its full color amount. And uh, so we will just keep cooking. Mix, 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 come back in a few, mix, mix, mix. And then I will show you how we handle this whenever it is all done. Okay, so I have turned the heat completely off. I wanna show you just how pretty this is. So we've got this gorgeous, bright tomato red, which is exactly what I was going for. And now I'm gonna get this out. So what I'm going to do here is get this into an extra pot that I have sitting right next to me because this is gonna be very, very hot. So please wear appropriate attire. I have these super, super big gloves on. They're very thick. Um, and you can get these at like hardware stores. So there's the second piece of fabric. Now I'm going to let this cool off before I actually move this. This is really, really heavy. And the next thing that I'm going to do is hit up my laundry room where I am going to let my washer do the next couple jobs here. All right, so we did all of that hot, sweaty work outside. I have put the fabric through a rinse cycle in the washing machine and then also an additional soap and water cycle. I have hung it to dry and here is what we have. Now, is this the tomato red fabric that I was looking for? Not exactly. Uh, you know, sometimes you don't know what you're gonna get when you die. And there's a few things that could have happened. One is I was working at nighttime and under the lights that I was working in, I'm not sure that I left this in long enough because I was setting the color based on what my eyes saw. And so it probably might have needed a little more time. Another thing is, is the eye dye poly comes in preset packets. I may have actually needed more dye. I typically use the Rit dye more uh, because I can measure it out according to the weight of my fabric. So I might have needed more dye for more color, but at the end of the day, this is for my Weldon's Fancy Dress Project, which you can check out my vlogs on that uh, in the other videos. And uh, so I'm okay with this. This is a neat color. It's pretty and it will work for what I'm going for. I want you to really understand that whenever you do these sort of fabric manipulation, especially dye work, you may not always get what you planned. So just know that, have extra fabric, roll with it. There's, a, there's things we can do to rescue things. Like for instance, I could send this through another dye bath, but I'm not going to. I really don't wanna waste the time doing it because I'm okay with this color. So I hope that you learned a lot about the synthetic dyes and actually how easy it is and really the only things that we need to focus on when we are doing dye work for synthetic is that we need high heat, basically just shy of boiling or right at boiling, and we need 
time and a lot of water if we're doing tub dyeing like this. So uh, other than that, it's pretty easy and oftentimes the biggest failures in synthetic dye projects come from the lack of high heat. So I hope you come back next time here at Cosplay Sewing School and uh, you visit my website, cosplaysewingschool.com and be sure to hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you next time. Bye!